Hi guys, I'm going to read to you out of this book right here, How We Got to the Moon by John Rocco. It is a really, 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 really great book. No one has checked it out yet. So I'm hoping that me reading a little bit out of this book and having a trivia about it will encourage someone to come and check out this amazing book. Look at this, it's so cool. Anyway, I'm gonna read to you about the Apollo spacesuit. It's very interesting, very cool. All right, the Apollo, <laughs> Oh, I don't know how to read. The Apollo space suit. The emu, see it? Emu, it's an extra vehicular mobility unit. Okay, it says landing on the moon isn't enough. The astronauts are going to get out and walk around, explore the surface, collect rocks and leave footprints on the lunar soil. To allow them to do this, engineers at the International Latex Corporation and Hamilton Standard need to work together to design a spacesuit that will give the astronauts the same kind of protections they have had inside the crew cabin. They need to create nothing less than a wearable spacecraft. The spacesuit will need to be fully pressurized to protect the astronauts from the vacuum of space. It has to defend them from the tiny particles called micrometeoroids that zip through space at thousands of miles per hour and could damage or even puncture the spacesuit. Temperatures on the moon will fluctuate between 260 degrees Fahrenheit in the sunlight and negative 200 degrees, negative 280 degrees in the shadow. So the suit will require insulation. Finally, the astronauts will need a way to control the environment inside the suit so they don't overheat. What happens to the human body when exposed to the vacuum of space? What do you think is gonna happen? Lack of oxygen will lead to hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen to your brain, and you will become unconscious in about 12 seconds. Your body will swell to twice its normal size as all the liquids inside of you start to vaporize. All the gases inside you, including the air in your lungs, will rush out of your body as they try to equalize with, with the outside air pressure, which is zero. Death will occur in 90 seconds. <clears throat> so why the liquids in your body will boil into a, or will boil in a vacuum. So when you open a can of soda, it fizzes and the liquid bubbles. This is because it is aerated. Carbon dioxide was injected into the liquid under high pressure. The carbon dioxide molecules stay embedded in the liquid while it remains unopened and under pressure. Once the can is open, the CO2 molecules bubble up and escape because the pressure outside the can is so much less than the pressure inside. In other words, the pressure equalizes. So in a vacuum where there is virtually no pressure, the liquids in your body boil immediately. So there's a little picture of it. <laughs> okay, the three layered Apollo spacesuit. Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> All right. Two different companies work together to create one of the most remarkable garments ever imagined. Designed to be as tough as armor, yet supple enough to allow astronauts the necessary mobility to accomplish all the tasks they need to perform on the moon, the space suit, <laughs> the space suit is a work of art. Each astronaut will receive three custom built suits, one for training, one for the mission, and one as a backup. Each suit will take hundreds of engineers seamstresses and technicians around 5,000 work hours to produce. All right, so the outer layer, which is this bad boy right here, that is the integrated thermal micrometeoroid garment. Whoo, sounds a little fancier than just denim jeans. The outer layer of the spacesuit is made up of a number of different materials that will put protect the astronaut from the extreme temperatures of space as well as the micrometeoroids constantly bombarding the lunar surface from deep, deep space. Oh my god, I cannot talk. All right, the next layer is the pressure, oh my gosh, pressure garment assembly. So this sweet little deal here. Pressure garment assembly, this airtight inner layer, also called flexible pressurized suit, is pressurized with oxygen to protect the astronaut from the pure vacuum of space. The elbows, shoulders, wrists, and knees are made to be easily flexible for better mobility. Number three, this fancy deal here. This is your liquid cooling garment. 
This long john-like garment is made of thin netting interwoven with hundreds of feet of spaghetti-like tubing that can carry cold water pumped from the backpack to cool down the astronaut who was wearing all these heavy layers while working on the moon. And as we heard earlier, the temperatures can range from 280 degrees to negative 280 degrees. So you probably want something to help keep cool. All right, up top, up here, this little thing that kind of looks like a pillow. That is your oxygen pure, oh, oxygen purge system. So sitting on top of the PLSS, which is portable life support system, which we'll learn about that one next. Sitting on top of the, that is a backpack supply of oxygen to be used only in emergencies if the PLSS portable life support system fails. All right, <laughs> so the portable life support system is here. It's the sweet little backpack. This backpack provides oxygen, communications, and thermal control. All right, and guess how much this bad boy weighs? This whole suit weighs. 180 pounds so at 180 pounds the apollo spacesuit and portable life support system together weigh more than the average astronaut but in the moon's gravity they only weigh about 30 pounds so it's easy it's like carrying around like a little kid or your dog or your fat cat whatever all right so this is kind of interesting this is how the development of the apollo spacesuit came about it's really cool let me go back one more time just to give you another look at these super cool pages i'm telling you guys this whole book is so cool it's so cool amazing stuff okay here we go the development of the apollo spacesuit all right, spacesuits of science fiction. Science fiction writers have been putting their characters in all varieties of spacesuits since the 19th century. The designs were far from practical, but they often became a jumping off point for actual spacesuit design. First pressure suit was in 1934. This guy looks really comfy, doesn't he? With the help of the B.F. Goodrich Company, American aviator Wiley Post developed the first true pressure suit. The suit had an inner rubber bladder that could be pressurized along with an outer layer made of rubberized parachute fabric. The outer layer was glued to a jointed frame that allowed Post the limited movement he needed to operate his plane's flight controls. The helmet, made from aluminum and plastic, was similar to a diver's helmet. On September 5, 1934, Wiley Post flew to an altitude of 40,000 feet where the air is so thin that the atmosphere pressure is less than three pounds per square inch and his pressure suit worked perfectly. That was in 1934. Okay, the next one is the XH5 tomato worm suit. 1943, BF Goodrich continued to do pioneering work in the field of pressure suits. Inspired by the movements of the segmented tomato worm, Engineer Russell Colley came up with the XH5 design. One of the downfalls was that once pressurized, the suit's arms and legs expanded like balloons, which made movement really kind of not good. Um, next is Playtex, <laughs> from girdles to bras to suppression. Playtex, a division of ILC, which is what we talked about earlier, the International Latex Corporation, because everyone needs to know that, specializes in making rubber garments that move with the body. It has been making rubberized girdles since the 1940. Girdles are like things that you wear or to kind of make your tummy smaller. So like a Spanx kind of, but it's a girdle. So um, in March 1962, when NASA started searching for a company to make spacesuits, the leaders of the ILC saw an opportunity to take their expertise to the moon. Although there are many other companies in the aerospace industry fighting for the same opportunity, ILC has been developing something that no one else has, the convolute. So the convoluted joint. So remember we saw that on the spacesuit in the arm part, right? That's part of the pressure garment thing. Oh, I can't tell if I'm gonna get in the right spot. <laughs> Sorry. You just need to check the book out and then you can see it for yourself. 
All right, the convolute is a segmented natural latex bladder similar to the XH5. The big difference is the convolute has embedded nylon and steel restraints and nylon webbing that prevent the bladder from expanding and blowing up like a balloon once it's pressurized. This restraint system allows for a freedom of movement that no other company can compete with. So here is a little bit more information about that. And that's it. So that's your little information about the space suit. So if you remember, the outer layer is the integrated thermal micrometeoroid garment. The second layer was the pressure garment assembly. And the third layer was the liquid cooling garment. That's the spaghetti noodles that circulate the water to keep them cool. All right, that's all I got for you. Good luck.